So I've got exactly five ounces filled to the brim. I'm going to do a resin tray that I may turn into a plate. I'm going to experiment with this one. I haven't done red yet, so I'm going to attempt red today. The exact equal parts A and B. So you don't got to measure, you don't weigh it, you do it by measurements. That's the hardener. Got me a cool silicone spatula from Lowly Vape. And they did something longer for bigger containers because those stir sticks just weren't getting it. So we're going to mix this for four minutes, then put it in another cup and mix it for another couple minutes. So I'll be back. Okay, so I got it mixed up. Been mixing for about six minutes and it looks like it's pretty good. Got my heating torch. This is counterculture, medium of viscosity artist resin. Love it, love it, love it. Heat resistant up to 500 degrees. That's why I highly promote it. It sets up in a relatively quicker time frame than a lot of the other resins and so that you can mold it and do things uh, like that. So it's been about five minutes since I finished mixing it. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put about an ounce. In this little beaker. And not much at all in this one. And I'm going to add some advanced metallics.com ultra gold brass to that. It's kind of like little, it's not glitter and it's not flakes, but it's got some texture to it. Super shiny. So just a little bit of that. So that's mixed up. And this I want to try. This is from KS Resin. It's El Dorado Gold Pigment Paste. <gasps> caught it, caught it, caught it. Take me a card. Scoop it back up because that stuff is important. It's down the side of the cup. I'm just messy today. You can always plan and be confident in the fact that I will make a mess for you if nobody else will, okay? Just telling you the way it is. So I've got a nice sticky gooey cup. The good part about the uh, counterculture silicone mat is it wipes up pretty easy. That's why I keep baby wipes nearby. Hopefully get some of that mess off the side of the cup so I don't make a sticky mess with my hands and gloves and over and over again. So I was thinking I want this to be, my mold holds 10 ounces, and I'm thinking I want it to be less, which I'll put that for you to see here. So that's a 10 ounce mold. So I want to put, I get me a coaster that holds about three ounces or so, and as always with any molds that you use, you make sure they're clean. The way I like to do it is get me a nice big old piece of masking tape, 
get all the glitter, hair, fur, dust. That kind of picks it up because it's sticky, you know? Doing the same thing with the little mold because my house has got lots of all the stuff that's not supposed to be in here. Fur and hair and dust. And okay, so that would hold normally 13 ounces. But what I'm going to do is maybe put about 3 ounces in here and about 7 ounces in there. That's my plan. So anyway, this one <clears throat> is going to be the El Dorado, as I was saying earlier before I had my snafu. I've been using <clears throat> this beautiful mica powder that is gorgeous, and this is a little bit deeper in color, but I wanted a paste just to try something different. It's a different color, and it's a warmer, way warmer than the the other. So now I'm wondering if I want to even use this, but what I'm going to do is just leave a little bit on my stick. And when I say a little bit, I'm talking, I don't know, it's just a dab. I'm going to put that in my resin. You have to wipe your stick off and scrape and because, you know, paste will stick to your stick and you know, when you're adding anything that's a wet medium, you want to always scrape and stuff like that. Okay, so that's not quite as gold as I want it, but I don't want this color as so much. So I am going to get that powder. Decor Rom Gold. It's very fine pigment powder. And I'm trying to take the lid off carefully behind the scenes here because uh, it is very fine and it just goes everywhere. So I'm going to put a little helping of that in there. I'm going to leave that on my stick for my red. So I'll just put that in there. That brightened it up considerably. And then I'm going to take Pinata Rich Gold. And I'm going to put, let's just put one, well, it, there went uh, one and a half drops, but one drop is what I wanted of the alcohol ink. I like to do that just to make it disperse a little bit into the color. So I'm going to put that aside, and then the rest is going to be, this is a nine ounce cup. Okay, I'm going to leave a little bit of clear just for the heck of it. And I'll show you why in just a minute. Okay, I'm going to put this against something where it doesn't tip. So this stick doesn't have anything but a little bit of powder on it. To this, this is Let's Resin. So I'm squirting in. It's a pearlized pigment. I'll just put a few drops or so. Uh, I didn't really squirt squirt, but for eight or nine ounces of paint, it's substantial. I want it transparent, which it is. Now, I wanted to put some alcohol ink in it and I don't have red I have magenta and I have orange so I'm gonna put a little magenta stir this up and see what it looks like and I'm gonna put a little bit of orange to warm it since I had no red alcohol ink. Now, that looks pretty good. Got a little time on my side because I want the resin to kind of sit and do its thing. 
start to heat up a little bit. So this is just crystal crushed glass that I made from glass beads or per, um, pebbles. The ones that have the flat sides, I heat them for a while on the stove and then you put them in an ice bath. And so then you crush them in something protective with a hammer. And so I, uh, I've made my own. I don't want a ton, I just want a little sparkle around the edge. I'm taking out the really big pieces. Some there's really fine, and then some is more substantial. I have a little uh, fan brush that is made for painting, but I keep it over here when I'm working on resin to just kind of sweep glass or glitter or whatever because whatever you put in a silicone mold is um, typically going to stick pretty pretty well to your mold. So this kind of helps move it around with the little bristles. So just kind of getting things moved around to the edge. If I have heavier in one area then I just need to you know kind of evenly try to make it work. So you have about 20 to 30 minutes working time with the resin before it starts really heating up on you and then if you get it to a certain point where you've gone too far it almost turns to plastic on you and you don't want that to happen. I've had that happen and it's not fun. You don't get good results. So you, it's just not a good thing. I'm not doing that on the coaster. I could, but I'm not. And I use the low temp heat gun around the edges because if you overheat your silicone mold with a torch, it will stick to your resin. It'll kind of ruin your mold. I haven't ruined a mold yet, really, but I hear about people doing that all the time. So I use my 300 watt heating this embossing tool, but it's called a heat tool, but it's really for embossing. It's in an Amazon link below the video. My preference might would have been to have gone a little deeper with the red, but I wanted to leave it transparent because I'm going to add the gold in in a floral pattern, and I I didn't want the red to be so thick in color that you couldn't see it through to the other side, and I'm hoping it won't be. cover it and we'll be back in probably about four or five hours. Okay, I'm not taking this out yet because it's still flexible, but I did want to take my other mold out, which I have because I couldn't wait. This is a plastic shower curtain, lightweight one, and um, I really don't, I don't want creases, but and that'll probably happen anyway. I could leave this flat, but I really wanted to see it in a bowl shape. So, here it goes. I'll just heat that and hopefully that'll settle back down. 
my pet, so I kind of wanted it at like five. So this is the underside, the bottom, and I think it's really pretty, so I kind of wanted it to kind of show at least this part here, if it does. I can tell the gold really dispersed. It wasn't uh, heavy enough, so I didn't have enough pigment paste in it, but uh, you know. I can, I can still peel it away, so I can totally look at this one too. <laughs> I get, I get anxious to see something, and I probably have to put another layer of resin on this. But because I heated it right there, it's not wanting to pull away. But I can kind of get a peek at the other side. Okay, it's not, it's kind of like this, but it's not even that strong. So I'm gonna leave it in and probably put a thin coat of resin over it. And I may, I may put some artwork on it and then a thin coat of resin since it's kind of simple and not super fancy. So I'll just leave that as is for now. So I'll be back tomorrow. So I embellished this one right in the uh, mold. It's a coaster and I'll put a coat of resin on it tomorrow. And uh, it'll be set up hard, but I'm gonna you know, clear coat this to protect it and make it heat resistant. So there's that. So that's what I embellished with the uh, fine tip writer. And it's just a regular look on the other side, nothing special. That gold did not do the kind of a petal effect that I wanted, but it's going to be pretty anyway. So I'm going to pop it back in so that when you put your cut of resin on it will um, seal it nice and tight on top. I could just dome it, but this will just make it a little bit easier just to leave it in the mold and do it that way. But it's very pretty as it is right now, but I want to preserve this with a clear coat. This is still flexible. Just checking on it, making sure nothing's stuck to it. So I'll be back tomorrow. Before I reveal the red bowl, I wanted to show you I took this holographic film, window film, and last night I put a bead of GE Advanced Silicone Waterproof clear 100% silicone caulk onto it and squeezed out a healthy dose of it and went around the edge with a little bit of a soapy water and my fingers and just um, tried to smooth it as best I could while it was wet and gooey. So I'm just peeling away a little bit that was real thin on the surface of the plastic just to get rid of that little thin edge so it's a nice clean if you see any little black lines or specks that's where I traced on the other the reverse side where the peel off adhesive paper backing is, I, I kind of, you know, drew, drew in a pattern on that side. 
So it's just a free form. It's not supposed to be round. And it's 12 inches, 11, 12. So 11 to 12 inches. And I wanted it wonky. I didn't want a perfect circle. So this will be a future clear resin piece that I do. And then I won't have to worry about it bleeding out um, around the edges where I put the crystals. So I just went ahead and did this for a future clear holographic piece with some crystals out of resin. That will be either a, you know, it'll probably be like a freeform bowl. So back to what I had done yesterday. I've got my coaster that's back in the mold. I'm going to put some resin on top of that here shortly. And this was a thin shower curtain. It did pretty good because the resin was set up enough to where it didn't stick to the plastic. Um, I have a little bit of a, a rim. If you do anything that has any edges, it will kind of pick up that shape and that's kind of okay. I don't really mind that. But now it's hard and you can see it's pretty on the back side. It's not super, um, you can't really make out a pattern or design super easy. And, and then it's, it's really pretty on this side. And then you have the clear glass crystals around the edge. And so it's this nice little bowl. And it sits down. It has kind of a flat surface from being on the clear ball here. So just keep that in mind when you're shaping your pieces. If you if you do it on a plate that has a, le a ledge or anything like that, it's going to pick up that imprint wherever it lays over. Uh, but the plastic worked good as far as how far this one was finished setting up. And um, the plastic didn't make creases, which is sometimes what happens if your resin is still really flexible and not quite set up. It'll leave plastic creases, and it didn't do that with the shower curtain, so that's good. So, that's the results of this one. Really pretty. Okay, here's the finished bowl, which I've shown you, and here is the finished Poster. I'll paint the edges gold. So this is what happens when you heat a little too close to the edge sometimes. It can stick. I didn't ruin the mold, thank goodness. But now it has a clear coat on the top. I typically use liquid gold which is oil based and you can see the color on the lid because it's leaked but it is full can as it goes a long way. So I could use that. I could use uh, gilding paint. This is Craft Smart brand which is from Michaels. It's oil based. A little bit different shade. More of a brassy gold. And I have Decor color from my Amazon link. It's a gold leaf pen, and you just go along the edges. The only downside for this is that if you have any cracks and crevices that you can't get into, I had some of that clear resin that snuck down in beside the the mold so it's got a little a couple of edges that are weird but okay it's painted with gold on the edges just looks like that on the back side 
single coaster. Counterculture is offering a $10 coupon if you go to their website, which I will have a link below the video. And um, you can use $10 off until November 8th at midnight. If you want to try out counterculture resin, this is a great time to try it. It's also in my Amazon link. And uh, you know how much I love it. So I'll see you on the next video.